Congratulations, Lee and Darla on Coco. What a gorgeous moving picture. So congratulations. Thank you. Small. Thank you. Lee, I understand that as well as directing the movie, you were also involved in writing the story of it. So can you tell us a little bit about where the inspiration for Coco came from? Sure. Um, after we finished making Toy Story 3, we started to kick around ideas mm -hmm. uh, for what we might want to do next. And one of the ideas that kind of bubbled up for me was the idea of telling a story set against the Mexican celebration of Dia de Muertos. I had long been interested in the celebration, um, mostly through the, the artwork, the folk art, and the iconography around it. And I was just kind of fascinated with this um, weird juxtaposition of skeletons with bright colors and celebration. And I wanted to learn more about it. And as I started researching and learning what the celebration was really all about, I learned about how important family was to the celebration and, and uh, this obligation to tell stories about loved ones and make sure that their memories stayed alive. And that just seemed to be a really universal idea to me that could potentially be relatable to people all around the world. Um, so um, I saw the opportunity to do something different, to celebrate a you know, beautiful culture that was different than my own. Um, uh, but at the same time, tell a story, hopefully, that people could relate to everywhere. Excellent. Great, great. There's so many memorable characters and scenes in this film. Do each of you maybe have a personal favorite one, maybe one that stands out that ended up kind of exceeding your expectations? I mean, there's so, yeah, as you said, there's so many beautiful uh, scenes in this film. And uh, honestly, uh, I'm sorry, the whole thing, I, I was already in love with this film. I already was uh, in love with it in Storyboard. And as all of our hundreds of artists brought this thing to life, this film to life, uh, I became overwhelmed with the beauty of it uh, every day, honestly. Yeah, love the whole thing. Um, I guess I'm especially proud of uh, the scene where we first see Miguel alone up in his attic space, learning mm -hmm. to play guitar yeah. from watching old De La Cruz movies. Mm -hmm. um, it's always lovely to be able to tell a story uh, visually without dialogue and kind of really get a sense of what's going on in somebody's heart. And, uh, and I think uh, hopefully we did a good job in that scene. Yeah, excellent. As you mentioned there earlier, Lee, you guys worked together on Toy Story 3 and you both have worked for a number of years in animation in Disney, Pixar specifically. I'd imagine that is kind of the dream job, but I was just curious about what do each of you find is the greatest challenge in producing and directing animation specifically? I mean, it's always story, to, uh, to be honest with you, because mm -hmm. we now can do a lot of things technically. Back in the day, we were inventing uh, the technology as we were trying to figure out the story. Um, and while this film does have a huge scope, and there was a lot of things to get up on the screen responsibly, uh, it's always trying to figure out the story that That's is the hardest. The hardest yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you find the same. Yeah, yeah, it really is the same. I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I feel like it doesn't matter if it's animation or live action. Mm -hmm. um, story is the hardest thing. We've been telling stories for thousands of years, and it, and it never becomes any easier. It's just, it's, it's very difficult to tell a good, well-rounded story, and that's what we put most of our time into. Excellent. Um, speaking of Toy Story 3, again, I hope you guys don't mind me mentioning it temporarily just because I'm such a major fan of that film. Um, but for me, that scene of the toys going into the incinerator, I think, never mind in the history of animation, I think in the history of film, that is one of the most powerful, moving mm -hmm. scenes that's ever been brought, brought to the big screen. Did you expect it to have the kind of emotional impact that it had at the time? Um, I think we knew that it was a powerful scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we worked very hard to have the sequence be emotionally honest. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what people have really responded to is that, um, you know, we were so, I think, respectful of the toys as being not just cartoon characters, but being people, you know, mm -hmm. characters with souls. And, um, and that they were acting in such a mature uh, kind of, I don't know, emotionally honest way in that scene. I think that's what people yeah. ultimately really There's reacted to. There's a purity to, to that scene. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that it's something that like Coco and Toy Story 3 have in common and a bunch of other Disney Pixar movies. And actually I was talking to some of the guys in the room there about how we all ended up crying during Coco. Yeah. And I certainly <laughs> cried during that scene in Toy Story 3. And because Disney Pixar kind of has this reputation of not just moving you, but having you actually bawling your eyes out, <laughs> is that something you're kind of almost conscious of when you go into a new project, um, something of like reputation you have to uphold? I mean, not in that way. Yeah. We, we were just trying to make movies that people will connect with yeah. and make these 
characters that are real and you have a lot of empathy with and you're, con you're just with them on their journey. Um, and and that's, we don't talk about, we have to make people cry here, but we definitely want to be emotionally satisfying and deep as we possibly can. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I see a lot of movies, and very few of them actually make me feel something, mm -hmm. and very very few actually make me cry. So, um, the fact that people tell us that they're as emotionally affected as they have been mm -hmm. is, um, it's not anything we take for granted, and we're we're very honored that we've like created that space for people that they can just be free to feel that deep emotion. One of my theories is that when you go see an animated film, you're guard is unconsciously down, mm -hmm. you're, you know, I, because you're, you're just open in a way. It, it, it speaks to your inner everything, your inner child maybe. That's one of my, you know, theories and that you're op more open to emotions in general, both the joy of it and maybe some of the, the, the tear jerky moments as well. Excellent, excellent. Between um, Moana and Coco, I think something that Disney, well, Disney and Disney Pixar have done for years, but particularly you can see it very clearly in more recent years, is that you're looking to other countries and other cultures and bring those stories to life. Is there any chance that maybe there could be a Disney Pixar movie set in Ireland in the future? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I mean, Brave happened. I know yep. that's not Ireland, but it's close. Um, I know we feel like right now Tom Moore's got things pretty well covered. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> You never know. Every movie that we've ever made at Pixar is because a director had an idea and the studio supported them to pursue that idea. So uh, ideas could come from anywhere, including Ireland. Maybe you guys will get some inspiration during your visit here. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so just finally, looking to the futures, um, expectations couldn't be higher for Toy Story 4. Again, sorry, I'm mentioning Toy Story, love it. That's right. um, <laughs> is there any kind of, I know you probably can't say much, but is there any kind of hint or indication of what we can expect from that film? Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, you know, <laughs> it's, it's going strong. It's, it's got this am an amazing filmmaking team on it. Josh Cooley's directing it and Jonas Rivera's producing it. And uh, I, I can't wait to see uh, what, what they come up with at the end of the day.